The printed circuit board of a furnace is the brains of the whole operation. It's the quarterback calling the shots down on the field of high and low voltage circuitry that we work on every day. A diagnosis of a bad control board isn't an uncommon one. In fact, we make that call a couple times a week during a busy winter. Today, we talk about the actual parts on the control board that fail and explore some of the most common reasons why. That's what's coming up this week on Fox Family Heating and Air. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. We've been getting a lot of excellent feedback from our fellow technicians like you who are out in the field working on this stuff every day. Please feel free to express your opinions about failed control boards and any interesting stories that you might have about them. We're always trying to learn as HVAC techs and there's no better information than the lessons that you've learned and can pass on to us. So what is failing on those boards? A slice of silicon 10 years old should be the same composition as a one year old board, right? It seems so. Regardless, aging systems do begin to give more problems than newer boards. Printed circuit boards these days are composed of shrunk down relays and switches mounted on a rigid green board to orchestrate the sequence of operations that starts up the furnace and gives us heat. 30 and 40 year old furnaces that we see still out in the field have these relays and switches also. They're just bigger and sturdier because they're made from more durable parts. Last week we discussed how the smaller boards get, the weaker the material that they're made of. The material is thinner, the solder connections are smaller, and the relays are made with tinier pieces of plastic and metal. Our customers might think a control board should last the lifetime of the furnace, and I'd say about 50% of them do. But all parts on the furnace control board have a life expectancy, and many things can happen to accelerate the aging process of the parts on that board. Assuming that there's power to the board, it should function properly. If it's not, then there's nothing that we can really do to bring it back to factory specifications. You can't make field solder connections right there on the spot that are going to meet any kind of standard that the manufacturer has set when creating the board. Different soldering alloys will clash, resulting in temporary fixes at best. That brings me to my first common failure on a control board. I can't tell you how many times I've talked about failed solder connections on the back of a control board. Molex plugs have stems that are secured to the board and soldered in place to adhere to the metallic circuitry that acts like wires do in a house. If the wire has a break in it, that circuit isn't going to work, right? When the back side of those Molex plugs develop a crack, it makes a gap between the stem that goes through the board to the back side where it meets the circuitry. Any fractures in that solder connection are going to start creating intermittent abnormalities. There's a low voltage Molex plug and a high voltage plug that's going to be a part of any furnace control that we work on. You might ask, well what makes the solder connections fracture like that? Two words, thermal expansion. Once the solder is applied and forms, it remains a very rigid material with very little plasticity. Warmth creates expansion. And that kind of expansion within the solder joints is going to create a gap between it and the stems that it's supposed to be attached to. This is going to cause problems with your boards either now or in the future. Yeah. When I see a control board that has fractured solder connections on the back of the board, I let the customer know that it doesn't meet factory specs anymore and offer to replace it for them so that they don't have problems in the future. Relays and switches can stick, burn, and pit. Just like a contactor on the condenser outside, the control board at the furnace has miniature relays that allow certain motors to receive the voltage that they need to operate. And just like the contactor on the condenser, those furnace relays start to pit and burn from arcing that occurs across the contacts as they close. High temperatures can melt the protective coating on the windings of the coil of a relay, which can prevent the contacts from closing in the first place. Plastic pieces that the contacts are mounted to can lose stability with ambient heat surrounding the relay as well. This can warp the contacts of the relay causing them to be misaligned and unable to function. When an electromechanical switch like the ones that are on our boards are suddenly being used after a long period of downtime, like the end of one winter to the start of a next winter, they can become permanently stuck. 
tapping on the relay sometimes can help, but only delays the inevitable failure of that board. Over voltage, like inrush and other voltage spikes, can create overheated situations all the time. Under voltage can prevent the contacts of a relay from staying closed securely. And it's not just the voltage that's damaging these parts, it's also the current being carried with that voltage that wears out switches prematurely. So now let's talk about power surges. Asking questions with the homeowner can reveal a lot when diving into an HVAC system that isn't working properly. A recent thunderstorm or lightning strikes in the area can send a surge through the house's electrical system. That surge might not affect the lights or kitchen appliances in the house. They may not even trip the breaker that the furnace is on at the main panel. But it might take the transformer out before the board, sending a jolt onto that sensitive control board. Brownouts from the power company are notorious for damaging HVAC equipment. A reduction in power that all of a sudden comes back on with no warning at all could damage the protective coatings on parts causing them to fail either now or even a couple years from now. Another power surge that a house can experience is a car accident in the area that might have taken out a power line. As the connections of those high voltage wires attached to the poles rip apart or get stretched, that influx of energy and the damage it causes happens instantly. Many HVAC parts have been taken out by these situations, causing anywhere from a few thousand dollars worth of damage to simply blowing a little 3 amp fuse on the control board. No one should ever underestimate the freakish damage that can occur to an HVAC system when power surges happen in or around the house. Next, let's talk about static electricity. Careless or unsuspecting technicians who walk across a carpeted floor to get to their furnace can build up more voltage on the body than it can store. As a result, that voltage will need to be transferred to the next piece of metal it comes in contact with. You don't want that to be the metal on a control board. ESD can even develop after you've grounded yourself to the furnace the first time. Standing on carpet can create that static very easily. The damage is done to control boards when electrostatic discharge hits the board. There are very thin insulating layers within the control board's transistors, relays, switches, and solder joints that will break it down. What's even worse is that sometimes that discharge won't cause the damage to the board immediately. It'll damage the insulation to a such a degree that the device fails sometimes hours or even years later. A diagnosis of a bad control board isn't an uncommon one, but it makes me wonder what that board has gone through during its life to have gotten to the point where it's now failed. The parts themselves have an expected lifespan. Everyone agrees with that. But factors such as thermal expansion, power surges, and static electricity all play a big part in the degradation of a control board over time. So listen guys, we've been getting excellent feedback from our fellow technicians like you who are out in the field working on this stuff every day. Please feel free to express your opinions down below in the comments section about failed control boards and any other interesting stories that you might have about them. We're always trying to learn as HVAC technicians and there's no better information than the lessons you've learned and can pass on to us. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.